Okay, this is our first uh, video screencast or vodcast for the year. This is Unit A, Part 1. Uh, part 1 is the first one of the three parts to this first unit, the cell. Uh, this first vodcast will fill in some background details for people that are not up to date, familiar with biology or your background uh, is a little shaky or you have a poor memory or never really got this stuff in the first place. We're aiming to keep this under 10 minutes and just a reminder at any time that you feel you need to record something or you want to write something down or you're not sure about what's going on or you've lost focus, stop, press pause and do what you need to do. So, to start every vodcast, and this is the first one, so this might take a little longer, we're going to start, try to start with the big idea. What in this unit, hopefully, uh, are we trying to get out of? And, uh, and I've tried to make it a little friendly here. So, you, the being that you are, are you because of the cells that make up your body. And this first unit, uh, is going to try to explain how cells work inside the cell so then when we go to study the human body that we will be able to understand it's not going to write over there on the side how your body which is made of cells work so you began your life right as a union between two cells, a sperm cell is one cell, and an egg as a cell, they united to form a complete cell, a zygote, which then divided trillions of times to become you. We eat cells, right? You might eat cells. An egg is a cell. You might scramble them up. Largest cell, I think, is an ostrich egg, tiniest one, right? If we're took looking at shelled uh, chicken, not chicken, but uh, bird eggs would be a hummingbirds. We, we humans like to eat eggs. You can buy some expensive caviar uh, and spread it on your little cracker. You're eating, again, eggs and eggs are cells. You are cells. So, uh, again, Big questions in this first screencast are, we're trying to answer what is life? What are the different types of life? This is pretty much the most important one. And how the heck does life work? How does it, how does it do the stuff it needs to do to be life? So the first thing, uh, if you would want to stop it here and focus on vocabulary, this would be, uh, to point out to you some key words of this course assumes that you have some point in your life taken science and some key words would be prokaryotic, eukaryotic, plant cell, animal cell, and what we're going to study in this course are organelles. So if we look over here at the diagram, we're seeing three basic kinds of cells. The smallest one prokaryotic cells belong, the words written there already, bacteria. These are, ready for it, cells that lack a membrane-bound organelle. So that means when we come to class and use our microscopes that when we look inside of a bacterial cell, we will not see a nucleus. We will not see a mitochondria. We will not see vacuoles or vesicles. The only organelle they contain are ribosomes because ribosomes are not made of a piece of membrane wrapped around them. We are an animal cell. We are also a eukaryotic cell. Plants, belonging to plants, are not like us. They are not round. They're square because they have a cell wall. They are also eukaryotic. They have organelles that contain membranes or that have, that are defined by membranes. And organelles just means things inside of a cell. 
organelles are the small parts of the cell that are defined uh, and do jobs, have jobs that they do within the cell. So we're at five minutes. So what does being alive mean? Well, by the strict definition, it means that you're made of cells. And the cell theory states that uh, all living things are made of cells. So in the strict definition, you need to be made of cells if you want to join the Alive Club. Um, cells are the smallest unit of life. And as we go through organizational levels, we see that a cell can make up tissue, a cell then can make up an organ, an organ can make up an organ system, which ta-da, then makes you the organism, the largest level. Uh, so to be alive, you need to not only, and I apologize, be made of cells, but you're also going to have to have a source of energy. And look at that. I don't learn from my mistakes, do I? So use energy. And in our case, we're going to talk about ATP. We're going to have to regulate our internal environment and maintain homeostasis. We're going to have to grow by mitosis. We're going to have to have some genetic material from our parents. And then before we die and kick the bucket and leave this planet for the other world, we're going to have to reproduce. So cell theory says all cells come from pre-existing cells. Cells are the building blocks of life, like in this wall. The bricks are the building block of this wall. And all, all life is made of cells. So that is a review. No one's going to come out and ask you that. That is just something review. However, you do need to understand that there are three kinds of life on this planet. There is prokaryotic life, there is eukaryotic life, and then we can subdivide eukaryotic life into animals and into plants. We do need to understand this. And this is one of our first focuses of trying to understand, can we compare these three things, plants, animals and prokaryotes. What time are we at? So back in grade 11, if you took uh, by 11, you looked at the kingdoms of life and Monera is an old school name. We no longer use it. Uh, we could just put prokaryotic life here, right? So in this course, we will talk about animal cells primarily because human beings are animals, but we should be aware that plant cells exist and we should be aware that prokaryotic cells exist. As well, also useful right, to understand that an animal cell is the biggest kind of cell it has, along with a plant cell, because it has organelles in it that are membrane bound. A bacterium, who is a prokaryotic cell, is small because it lacks membrane-bound organelles, so it can be tinier. A bacteriophage or phage, a virus, we could ask, is it alive, right? And by the strict definition, no. However, right, it does have some DNA inside of it, so it has some characteristics of life. Uh, last thing here, we're coming to the end. We also need to wrap our mind around the idea that different cells are going to have different functions in our body. We're looking on top at a white blood cell. Its function is to seek out and destroy invaders. So it is phagocytic. It can undergo phagocytosis. A red blood cell, its function is to transport oxygen. So it's not going to look or act the same as a white blood cell. This is the beginning of our long-standing trend in this course, looking at structure, looking at function. Can you explain some of the requirements of life? The big one, written in the big caps, right? Not yelling at you, but saying, hey, this is what really matters. And have you ever heard of cell theory? Do you get the basic idea that all life is made of cells? Hope that helped.